chapter 4.6 DC circuits. So first DC circuit we're going to look at, remember these are really transient circuits. So the transient RC circuit is a resistor in series with our capacitor. Who can tell me for an RC circuit, let's zoom in. How do we solve for the time constant tau for an RC circuit? Really easy to remember. It's just what? Yeah, it's just R times C, capital R times C. And who can tell me, what do capacitors resist the change in? Capacitors resist the change in voltage. Great job, Meg. Yep. Capacitors resist the change in voltage. This is why capacitors are commonly used as smoothing capacitors in rectifier circuits. And we'll, we'll get to that when we cover power electronics. All right, let's plug in some values. So remember, these are DC circuits. So what kind of voltage is over here on the left? Is this a DC voltage source or an AC voltage source? Here's a hint. Is, does this look like DC or AC? Yeah, it's DC. So let's use 30 volts DC as our input. Um, the switch is currently open, but at time equals to zero, the switch is going to close. Careful, lowercase t is our time variable, not um, capital tau is our time constant. So these two are different. All right, let's use a value of six kilo ohms for the resistor. And let's use a value of three microfarads for our capacitor. And uh, yep, this is page 34 in the reference handbook on version 1.1.1. And I think we got that down below at the footnotes. All right, here is the current in the circuit. But instead of solving for a phaser, right, an RMS value and a phase angle, we're actually going to have an instantaneous function, I of T. And we're going to spend a lot of time learning about instantaneous functions when we get to power electronics, um, but it should be really straightforward for tonight. Now, uh, there is going to be no initial conditions for this problem. So prior to this switch being closed, there's no voltage across our capacitor. Typically, that's going to be represented by V sub C of zero equals zero volts. This is your initial condition, right? This is the same thing as saying none or no initial conditions. All right, let's solve for the time constant. Let's clear this junk out. Let's solve for the time constant. What does everyone get for the time constant for this RC circuit? So our resistance is six kilo ohms and the capacitance is three microfarads. All right, in my calculator, let's see, I've got six times e to the three times three times e to the negative six. That's a 0 0.018, right? I can convert that to milliseconds by moving this over three times, right? Here's once, twice, three times. So that's 18 milliseconds. 0 0.018 seconds is going to be equal to 18 milliseconds. 18 milliseconds. The other way we could have done that really quickly is I could have just done 6 times 3 is 18, right? Kilo is 10 to the 3. Micro is 10 to the negative 6, right? 3 minus 6 is negative 3, right? Milli is 10 to the negative 3. So we could have just done uh, 6 times 3 if you're comfortable with that. All right. Um, first thing we're going to solve for is let's solve for the capacitor voltage function. So here's a formula right here. And our capacitor voltage function, V C of T, is the uh, voltage with respect to time across our capacitor. So plus minus V C of T. That's what we're solving for. And let's see, I'm going to put A here first because then we're going to prove our initial condition afterwards. All right. This looks like a really complicated formula, right? It's really not too bad. This just says for T, anytime equal to zero or after. In other words, the moment this switch closes and for any time after that, we can solve for the capacitor voltage. If we can fill in the values here, we can plug in any value for T. All right, what's my initial capacitor voltage? Who can tell me in the chat? What's VC of zero? The voltage across my capacitor be uh, right at the moment this switch is closed. Yeah, it's zero. How do we know it's zero? Problem told us, right? So zero volts, okay? Zero times anything is gonna be zero, right? So this goes away. So now I'm gonna rewrite this as V C of T equals 
capital V parentheses one minus E to the negative lowercase t, that's our time variable, not tau, divided by RC. Remember, RC is going to be tau. All right, let's plug in some values and solve. So let's just bring this guy back down here. What's capital V? What's our voltage in our circuit? 30 volts. Yep. One minus E, that's our exponent function, to the negative t, uh, t no change there, that's our variable, divided by, what was R times C? What was tau, R times C? Yeah, 18 what? 18 milliseconds. Be real careful with your units here. Real careful with your units. All right, all we're gonna do is we're just gonna distribute this out. Let's bring this back down. 30 volts times one, 30 volts. 30 volts times e to the negative t divided by 18 milliseconds is just gonna be the same thing, 30 volts times, and I'm gonna get rid of that volts, so it's just gonna be easier to see, 30 times e to the negative t divided by 18 milliseconds. That's it. That is our function for the voltage across the capacitor at any time t is equal to zero or greater than zero. Now, the problem said the initial voltage across the capacitor was zero. Let's prove that. And in doing so, we're gonna learn how to use these functions that are expressed with a variable of time. In other words, if I wanna know Vc of zero, all I'm gonna do is replace this variable everywhere it exists or everywhere it occurs in this function, I'm gonna replace it with zero. What's zero times anything? Zero, right? I'm gonna rewrite this as my initial condition, right? Vc of zero is gonna be 30 volts minus, this is just gonna be e to the zero, right? Who can tell me what is e to the zero equal to? Yeah, one. This is, if you're not familiar with this, this is a great algebra rule to know. It's gonna really simplify things for you. Any number raised to the zero power will always equal to one. So if e to the zero is one, one times 30 is what? 30. Who can cross that out? Because we're just multiplying by one. So now I have Vc of zero is 30 volts minus, and this is still 30 volts, even though we weren't showing that variable before. What is 30 volts minus 30 volts? Zero, right? So look at that. We just proved the same initial condition, which is no surprise because we used that initial condition to create this function anyways with time. All right, so that's the capacitor voltage. Let's do the same thing, but this time we're gonna use the second formula. We're gonna solve for the current function using this formula here. So we're solving for the current in this circuit using this formula. Again, it looks really confusing, but it's not too bad. Let's see, I've got V minus V sub C of zero, brackets all divided by capital R, more brackets all times the same exponential time function. What's our initial voltage? Vc of zero? Zero, right? I'm just gonna cross this out, right? V minus zero is just V. So let's rewrite this. So I've got I of T, let's make that a little neater. I've got I of T equals V divided by R, right? Times E to the negative T, remember time variable, not tau, that's our variable, divided by RC. All right, what's my V? Same as before, 30 volts, right? So I've got 30 volts divided by, what's my R? Six kilo ohms, right? So 30 divided by six kilo ohms times, it's the same E to the negative T divided by RC. What was that equal to? It's right here. We already did that work. So times E to the negative T divided by 18 milliseconds. All right, let's simplify this. What is 30 volts divided by six kilo ohms? I don't know, let's find out. 30 volts divided by six E to the three. 
0.005. Look at this. What, what's my variable? I equals to V over Z, right? Volts over impedance is amps. And again, I can move this over this decimal over once, twice, three times. That's five milliamps. Five milliamps. So I have five milliamps times, and then no change over here, right? We already did that work. Times our exponential time function, times e to the negative t divided by 18 milliseconds. And that's it. That's the current flowing through that loop, right? We can plug in any time with this variable to find the current at that specific time. And just like we did for the voltage across the capacitor, let's find the current at time equals to zero. So go ahead and pl plug in zero and let me know what you get. So if I replace my variable with zero, I can calculate my current at exactly time equals to zero, right? What is E, or I'm sorry, what is zero times anything again, right? Here I've got zero divided, negative zero divided by 18 milliseconds. That's just gonna be E to the zero. Any number raised to the zero power is gonna equal to one. One times any number is gonna be the other number. So I can just eliminate that. So my initial current at time equals to zero is five milliamps. That's all. All right, last, let's solve for the resistor voltage function, VR of T. So that's gonna be the voltage with respect to time across this resistor. That's all that function means. All right, similar, similar formula. We can do it two different ways. I can take my I of T function that I already solved for over here and I can multiply it by my resistor or I can take V minus VC of zero, take the difference and then multiply that by our exponential time function. We're gonna do it both ways. First, we're gonna use the first method. So VR of T equals, what's our time function with, or the current function with respect to time? It's right here, right? We solved for that in the last step. So let's just copy and paste this down below. And then we're just gonna multiply it by R. So I'm gonna put a parentheses around it, multiply by R. What's the R again? R was six kilo ohms. That's just the resistance in the circuit. What are my units, right? This is a voltage function. Let's check. V equals to I times Z, right? Ohm's law. So when we multiply these together, we got to make sure we keep the units correct. It's going to give us volts. All right. In my calculator, I've got five milliamps. So E to the negative three times six kilo ohms. Six times E to the three, 30. What are my units? 30 volts right? Times, no change here, right? Times our exponential time function that again, we already did the legwork on. We already solved for that. Now, what if I wanted to use this formula instead, this side? What was our initial voltage across the capacitor? The initial condition? That was zero. So if I replace this with zero, since it's V minus zero, I'm just going to do what? I'm going to scratch that out. So now I just have my initial voltage times the same exponential time function. What was the initial voltage? Um, excuse me, not the initial voltage. What is the DC voltage in our circuit? Excuse me. This is our initial voltage across the capacitor. This is our DC voltage, the source in the circuit. It was 30 volts, right? So if I use this formula, I've got 30 volts minus zero is 30 volts. 30 volts times our exponential time function. Look at that. 30 volts times our exponential time function. Same formula. doesn't matter which one you use. So use whichever one you're more comfortable with or use whichever one you can solve for quicker. All right. What is the voltage across that resistor at time equals to zero? We're going to call this B. How do we solve that? This function tells me the voltage across the resistor at any time of T, right? Really, it's any time at or after zero. So if I want to know what's the voltage across that resistor at time equals to zero, then I replace my T with zero. All right, let's simplify. 
I've got e to the negative zero divided by 18 milliseconds. Zero times anything, plus or minus, or divided by anything is just what? Is just zero, right? Again, e to the zero is what? E to the zero is what? Yeah, anything raised to the zero power is gonna be equal to one. One times 30 volts is what? This is just 30 volts. So the voltage across the resistor at time equals to zero is gonna be 30 volts. All right, what we're gonna do next is we're gonna graph each of these functions and it's gonna give you a better idea of what's happening in the circuit and why they're called transient circuits.